Are psychedelics spiritual and how do you sustain it? If they were, how would you sustain it? Well, when my guru took 1,200 micrograms of LSD and nothing happened, <laughs> which is roughly at least four to six doses, uh, it gave me pause. <laughs> because I certainly assumed something would happen. I mean, I, I was one of the specialists in that field, as you can. <laughs> and I knew it was good acid, and so on. And then I realized that if you're in Chicago, you don't have to take a bus to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. that, that it was like drinking water for him. Because for me, who was stuck here, to override the habitual thought patterns that kept me stuck here to show me that, I needed to blow my brains out, I mean, not blow my, but drug my mind, all chemically alter my synapses in order to allow that override of the computer program. And um, he had done that somehow or other, I don't know, sat in a fire or whatever he did. And, and so he was there and here and not here and not there. And so whatever it was you take to go from A and B, if you're in both B and A, nothing happens. Okay, that makes sense to me. So he said, these were known about long ago, he said, thousands of years ago, like the mushroom stuff and all those stones that they found connected with all the different mystery schools. He said, but most of that was forgotten along the way. He said, people, people used to prepare for it with fasting, with various kinds of life purifications. And he said, somebody said to him, well, is it useful? He said, well, he said an interesting thing. He said, it, it would allow you to come in and have the darshan of Christ. He's talking to Westerners. He's using the guru. He said, you could come in and have the darshan of Christ, but he said, you could only stay two hours, and then you'd have to leave. He said, you know, it would be better to be Christ than to visit him, but your medicine won't do that. Okay, that was the closest I got to a, his evaluation of what it was about. Um, what I have experienced is that psychedelics, in, when used sacramentally, well, I don't know how, when used, but I think used sacramentally, have the potential to show you where, you where you're stuck and where you're closed down. And it shows you, once again, the innocence that lies behind concept. Um, as your life goes on, I've been since 1961 when I first ingested psilocybin, 30 years of spiritual practices, changing my life, reorganizing. My life is such now that I would say that psychedelics are pretty irrelevant to me. Uh, they're not my, I'm not my guru, and I still learn something. I mean, as, a, as part of the research history of this whole movement, Every three years or so, two, three years, I'll take LSD somewhere on some island somewhere, where it's legal, of course, um, to, reassure, to see whether I've forgotten anything, whether there's something new to learn. Okay. And I learn something, I remember something again, but it seems less and less significant over time. And what I've seen is that a lot of the other spiritual practices don't play upon the fact that I need something external to myself in order to be who I am. Right? In other words, this is still, this is going to let me be who I am. And I'd like to go behind that to be who I am, independent of whether I have this or not. You, you hear what I'm saying? So um, I found it very useful to, um, I mean, I do a lot of spiritual practices off and on in different ways. And I, f I feel I'd be a, a hypocrite if I didn't honor the role psychedelics have played in my life. And at the same moment, I don't think it's the full ballgame. Okay? <laughs>